Okay, so um, let's start with what is an escape room anyway. An escape room is a brand new entertainment concept where you and a group of people come in and uh, we put you into a themed adventure room. You have to work together and solve puzzles and try and escape before your time runs out. Fun, right? Um, essentially, when you boil it down though, what an escape room is, is a game, right? And so when we're designing an escape room, we treat it that way and you'll see a lot of this, the same concepts uh, that are used for board game design or video game design um, throughout this presentation. Um, one of these concepts in particular was developed by uh, this man up here right now. Uh, his name is Johan Huizinga, and he was a strong voice against Nazism and fascism uh, in the 30s and 40s, but when he wasn't doing that, he was writing about play in society, which is kind of weird, but, um, you know. From his work came this idea of the magic circle, and essentially the magic circle is um, this notion that when you play a game, you're accepting that there's a certain um, number of, of rules that give real world events special meaning. Um, so a good way to think about that would be kicking a ball into a net. It's just kicking a ball into a net until you put it in the magic circle that is soccer, and all of a sudden it becomes scoring a goal. So when we're designing escape rooms, the first thing we try and do is create this magic circle so we can take this idea um, escaping a room or solving a puzzle, and we can give it just a little bit more meaning, whether that's diffusing a bomb, um, you know, escaping certain death, whatever that might look like. So the, the next step for us is uh, determining just the, the details that we want as a business um, to see in this escape room. So um, the number of people that are gonna be in there, uh, the difficulty level, uh, the demographic that you're targeting, are they escape room enthusiasts or are they newbies? Um, this is all going to influence a number of puzzles uh, in the room in the gameplay sequence. So then we actually start creating the puzzles. And the thing about creating puzzles is that they need to live inside the magic circle. So, you know, if, if we're creating a cabin and that's the circle that we've identified, we'll look around and, you know, maybe it's a, a dom domino puzzle in the table and that's where we would start. Uh, we also take uh, puzzles and we try and fit them into the theme a little bit. So this is just an algebra puzzle that you probably did a ton of. It's like the uh, two apples plus one orange equals 12. Um, two apples equals six, what's an orange? Um, we just change the fruit to animals and then we put it on wood rounds and now it lives in the escape room. Um, the other thing that we'll do is we'll try and automate as much as possible. So this is our opportunity to um, make the, the room pop a little bit, to really give uh, that wow factor to, to the people that are, are working through the escape room. Uh, the realities, though, of, of running an escape room is that we have to be pretty careful because in between um, one group finishing and another group starting, uh, our staff gets five minutes to reset the room. So if you can't uh, reset a puzzle within that time factor, it can't live in the ex escape room. It just doesn't work uh, on the business side. So. Um, the last piece, and you know, this is from our newest escape room, it's called Quarterback Sneak. It's kind of a journey around uh, the city of Edmonton. Um, it was a partnership we did with Edmonton Tourism. The last little bit that, that we look at is narrative. So we kind of developed that um, in, you know, at the same time uh, as the, the gameplay sequence. And so now we've got, um, so this is kind of a view of, of Quarterback Sneak. And um, so you're controlling kind of what they have access to. At the start, they've got access to those four puzzles, then they get into the warehouse, then they've got a couple of more things to do, and eventually they get to the point um, where they can free the quarterback. And So then we have kind of this pre-production done, um, and we meet with these great people um, and focus on bringing this from paper to life. Uh, so, you know, we'll work with set designers or professionals in the uh, film or theater industry, uh, technology professionals, uh, there's a production company in there, and we're trying to essentially create um, this storyboard or this inspiration uh, that we're going to use to build the room. So anyway, um, what you get is this is this is quarterback sneak, and I'll show you the actual room in a, in a couple of slides here. But what you get is um, this storyboard that you you create. Um, usually, this is done over a couple of pitchers of beer, um, seven seven people around a table in a really loud bar, so we're yelling at each other. But it's. Um, you know, after that, we get this inspiration. We go right into a production cycle, and, and this is essentially just like any other construction project at this point. You are building the room, and then you're layering things on. So the technology goes next. 
and then the puzzles, and then we use set design to kind of tie everything together um, to create essentially uh, an end result, which is the escape room, which is, you know, it's not bad compared to the, the picture you saw a couple, um, it, you know, slides ago, very similar. Um, and that's it, right? That's an escape room, except for it, it doesn't work that way because people don't interact with the space the way you might expect them to. Um, so what we, we do is we, we test, right? We test, and this is probably the most frustrating part for um, escape room designers because you go back to the production because nothing ever uh, works quite the way that you had it in, intended. Um, so we're, we're basically working through that cycle over and over again until we get to the point where we feel like um, we've got what we want, which is fun, because that's what people are trying to have. Is, <laughs> is fun. So some of the questions that we ask when we're in search of fun, um, you know, is how does the room flow? Are there way too many difficult puzzles at the start, um, which doesn't allow people to go through? Uh, or is it too easy at the start, which, um, you know, doesn't give people the entire experience? So that's the first thing we ask. Then we ask, is the room reliable? Because frankly, people are assholes sometimes. And <laughs> They will come in there and a certain group of people seems to want to come into escape rooms and just act like disruptive toddlers and so they rip things off the wall and destroy them and um, that we need to make sure that we can fix quickly and that it's durable. So um, the end result is that we get something that you know most people like and that's when we feel like we can go to market with it and we launch it. Um, you know you're never ever, I say most because you're never going to get everyone to like it. Not, not everyone likes Monopoly. Right, but it's been around for a long, long time. So um, that is basically a short whirlwind journey through designing an escape room. Thank you.